Hello again, guys. Ebenezer with you. Welcome back to another episode of QAM. And uh, before we get into it, I thought I'd give you a bit of an update on the channel itself before we talk about today's exploration and uh, what's come up next week. Uh, this is not so much of an update for the channel, more as a, a bit of an update from YouTube. Uh, we recently have received a, uh, a takedown notice and a breach of community guidelines. And uh, I guess this stems back to I was watching uh, Boxy Dan's uh, latest episode, The Mine Explorers from out of uh, North America. And uh, maybe I'll put a link down in the uh, description, but he was mentioning that in America, the uh, bureau that looks after the, uh, the old uh, care and maintenance for the mines effectively, starting to team up with YouTube and they're starting to delist mine exploring videos. Now, fast forward two weeks and uh, we had a 20 second clip of uh, a uh, what we thought was dynamite we found in one of our recent overseas trips. And uh, next morning we woke up and indeed the video had been taken down and we got a community strike against our name and a second community strike for uh, one of our older episodes. And uh, I think you only need three and that spells the end of the channel. And then uh, fast forward another two weeks and we've just aired probably the hairiest episode of QAM ever where it's about a 30 minute episode and it's all of us uh, dangling from a line inside a mine shaft. I literally did not sleep for three nights after that aired. I was sure that was gonna be uh, taken down as well and that would spell the end of the channel. So uh, you notice the intro music is missing as well. We kept getting emails about copyright licensing. Uh, so we've got to uh, clean up the act a little bit per se and make sure we're in our best behavior because uh, we have really been uh, putting a lot of hours into this channel and we'd hate for uh, for us to upset YouTube and have the channel taken down. Uh, so anyway, on to today's episode. There is no underground uh, explorations. We do believe all the old mines uh, up behind this mill are indeed bulldozed anyway, and they are also not accessible to the public. So uh, you're gonna see uh, a new announcement from QAM in terms of the vehicle we've just purchased. Uh, we call it the MEC, the Mine Exploring Chariot. Uh, and it really did uh, make these uh, couple of days up north, uh, up into central Queensland really fun. So. Uh, we're getting really close to Christmas. We really hope everyone is well. Uh, we hope you enjoyed today's episode. Been getting lots of uh, positive comments uh, on the channel lately that you're enjoying the explorations. And we really enjoy uh, hearing from the YouTube community. So uh, sit back and enjoy today's episode uh, of the uh, Raspberry Creek Goldfields. First worked uh, in the early 1890s and worked till about 1915. So enjoy, guys. Check it out, guys. This is the new little beast. One of the new Jimneys. Super fun to drive. And she is loaded up for an adventure. Much better prepared this time because uh, last time we did the German Gully, it was actually uh, Sam's food and water supply that kept me alive. <laughs> End up drinking uh, Boyne River water, which is not good. So lots of supplies, tent, camp stove. Can't fit any of my climbing gear in. So it's just going to be uh, bushwalking only. Still got all our uh, meters, radios, lights, helmet, all that sort of stuff. Got the gators for uh, the season it is because we're in uh, prime snake country. And I've uh, just had it fitted with some all-terrain tyres. It's going to be a fun adventure. I'm going around. The start of the car. It's all right, girl. Hello. Sorry. Everyone's having a feed. It's lunchtime. <laughs> uh, so we're in Cow Power State Forest, guys, and the little four-wheel drive is doing unreal. Just dropped the uh, tyres to 22 PSI. It's not really off-roading yet. It's just so comfortable. Already done a couple little river crossings. So I don't have a diff breather or a transfer case breather or a gearbox breather yet. So I've got to stick to the, uh, the factory weighting depth, which is only about uh, 350 mil. So I can't do anything uh, too adventurous. There has been a lot of rain out here lately out on the way to uh, Monal. So that's gonna be the only thing that uh, brings this adventure to an abrupt halt, is if we uh, hit a river crossing that this car isn't ready to uh, tackle yet. If that's the case, we just had some great news. Uh, Nathan has uh, met the 
probably the grazing lease holder uh, for the mine that we're going to go to tomorrow and it now means that we're able to drive pretty much all the way to the mine which is absolutely awesome so so far so good I've driven down this road in a little uh, tiny Fiesta more times than I wanted to and I was just an absolutely nervous wreck tiny 13 inch wheels on street tires and the uh, Fiesta is about four inches off the ground this thing is awesome all right see you guys when we uh, stop for some lunch I think all right we are still uh, tracking west absolutely devastated on uh, coming through the state forest I encountered a land cruiser going about 120 k's an hour on the uh, dirt track got a little stone chip absolutely spewing first damage to the Suzuki it is a beautiful day for exploring and uh, we are only about 25 k's away from our first destination so now the the mines that we are going to uh, look at today well the mines themselves are not accessible we've gotten pretty good at uh, plotting out where and where you shouldn't go in Queensland and although it is a little bit confusing the actual tourist attraction itself of the stamper and the old uh, steam boiler uh, do look to be on freehold land obviously the freehold land owner has uh, made it available um, and set it up as a tourist attraction because it is a, a gazetted road but permission is needed if you deviate from the road so the mines up behind the old uh, machinery that's left around is indeed off limits so the only exception would be to that is if we actually uh, meet one of the landowners on our way and uh, actually ask permission and as you guys know with uh, Queensland deviating from a trail can get you in a lot of trouble because of the uh, very strict biosecurity laws and uh, we do indeed have to clean up our channel a bit well wow, this is really pretty through here uh, we had our first uh, community strike it's a video that was up against the community guidelines it was actually a, a video we posted on youtube shorts and we thought we'd found some dynamite in a mine in new zealand and uh, youtube ripped it down and sent us an email saying that uh, they deemed it to be a breach of community standards and they kind of uh, likened it to uh, discussions of firearms which we understand we're not arguing that one sadly it wasn't even indeed dynamite it was actually resin uh, capsules that the miners use for uh when they're putting the big rock, rock bolts into the uh, ribs in the back of the mine when they're uh, bolting up the mesh we got another community strike against our name for some dangerous rock climbing and i do believe if we get three community strikes that may be the end of the channel so no swearing, uh, no licensed musics anymore. We keep getting emails about that. And uh, we've just got to make sure we clean up the content a little bit. So sorry if we've offended anyone. <laughs> but I'm absolutely starving. I'm loving this drive. It is so good to be off road and not have to absolutely stress out. I'll pick this up guys when we're at, uh, at the mines. All right, this track's getting pretty hairy. Goanna. See if it runs up the tree. Nope. All right, only five k's from the mines, guys. So far, this car is just smashed out this track uh, you definitely need low range definitely need four-wheel drive and some good thick tires because uh pretty uneven ground and then definitely some bash plates just to cover your uh, underbody because it's a lot of debris on this road Well, massive fail guys, massive fail. It is too hot for me to be trekking through that solo. And my GPS has sent me uh, the wrong way. I followed this road a couple of hundred meters and uh, it just goes to Lantana. 
and uh, that way there's a biosecurities gate that says uh, you can't go through without uh, permission first. And there's no phone reception out here. So this one might be a bus, guys. Absolutely spewing. So the road did go down there at one stage or further down that way. There's no way I'm risking that by myself. Not with the first outing with this little beast. All right. Spewing. Fail. Look at that for you guys. Hasn't all been a fail. Been a fun drive, I guess. Back to Monto, fuel up, get to the campsite. Maybe try and track down a few beers and uh, get ready for the huge day tomorrow. Tomorrow was always meant to be the main event. All right, we are back, back on the trail. We got uh, two thirds of the way back to Monto and put it back into the GPS and the uh, GPS initially sent us way too far east. So we're back. Hey mate. We are 19 kilometers away. So we will get to show you this uh, historic site after all guys. Sorry about the detour. So I was walking down the stairs. And this book is <laughs> Hello. Oh. <laughs> Alright gang, we made it. Welcome to the uh, historic Monal Goldfields. This is so cool to see history preserved like this. I'm sure if you follow this channel you appreciate it, but just even that already. Big 10 head stamp. One of the pistons is gone. I'll try my best to piece it together guys, but this here looks like a huge Cornish boiler. It's almost as uh, big as the one at Shamrock, probably one size down. Do believe it's a Cornish boiler just because of the one intake. I know the Lancaster or Lancashire, they have two little ones and I believe that was the uh, the most powerful boiler. I believe this one ran a uh, close second. I don't know how, well, there's a wasp nest in there. We're a fair way from the uh, from the uh, train line, even the historic rail line. So I don't know if this would have been coal fed, this may have indeed uh, been lumber fed. And you've got the beautiful engine, and this indeed could have been an engine and a uh, boiler combo. Similar to the one at the German gully. And if anyone's really good with their boilers, that to me looks like a Roby. I know these mines were started early in 1890s, 1891, 1892. This looks really similar, maybe a little bit bigger than the one we found at uh, the German gully. What would have happened guys, they would have fed this. This is the engine. The steam power would have uh, turned this big bull wheel. And the cam, which is now sitting down on the ground. You can actually count out the heads. One head, two head, three head, four head, five head, and then the other five up that end. That engine would have led up to this little rebate. Up in here, check it out. That's where the cam would have sat. So the momentum of that wheel would spin all these. And this is where the, uh, the operators would uh, hand feed in the ore. Well, they might have had some shoots, depending on how big uh, the mine was. And you see the big shoes on the stampers down there? How cool is that? And uh, what happened afterwards is indeed a guess. There could have been a shaker table, or there could have been an amalgam table. Oh, 
that's where the fines would have come out and if we went onto a shaker table you can see something was mounted here the shaker table would have used a gentle slope and some momentum to sort the heavies from all of the waste material that's how the uh, old timers would have captured their gold or they would have had a copper plate at amalgam table they'd treat that copper plate with mercury the gold would bond to the mercury and that's how they'd get their uh concentrates and then need to uh, fire that to get rid of the mercury and then capture their gold which they'd then smelt put into bars send away who knows this place is awesome so cool now this is a mystery i mentioned the german gully a few times maybe the kind of ore they are pulling out of here needed to be processed a second time now this is indeed a mill it's like a bird ann or a wheeler's mill and these these would spin to crush the ore and the fact that it's below here because a lot of this stuff would weigh absolute loads it's got to be below that they maybe needed to uh, further process the ore into this little fella you can see some of the crushing plates are still in this one unfortunately i don't think we've got a manufacturers other than just a number three and if you look closely is actually part of this mill just left all over the ground this is awesome yeah no manufacturer's plate what a sight so glad we got here guys i was bummed and the mine's up on the hill you got the united rise I think Star of the East over here, you got the red flag mines further down to our uh, southeast, and you got the Lady Griffiths, uh, which is uh, tucked up in that hill. But again, guys, that is freehold lease land. What we're going to do, we're going to follow this road around, we're going to launch the drone up, and we'll give you guys a bit of a look. But we're just grateful that whoever the landowner is has uh, allowed access here. Technically, they could gate it. So cool. Now this one's interesting guys and we're out of ideas for this one you can see one of the old grinding pads for the pan this one's a lot lower at the mill site you can see the big 10 head stamp is right up there again no manufacturers plate on this one you can see another one of the grinding wheels these two would have rubbed up against each other and all of the ore that was trapped in between there would just be grind to a pulp really cool the first time we saw one of these we thought it was a chilean mill but a chilean mill is different chilean's uh, mills a different uh, philosophy it's actually heavy stones that roll around the edge of the mill this one actually spins and i uh, use these grinding pads to uh crush the ore so cool and i dare say that's raspberry creek or a tributary of uh, monal creek where the old timers first panned for gold let's go have a look Wow, super scenic. You can see all the river rocks in there. I can actually see a bit of machinery in there. Or is that a bit of bark? Let's have a look. I don't know what that is. Huge bit of iron sitting in there. Not too sure on that one. But this is where they would have found their uh, alluvial gold guys panning this creek then they would have made their way up is what gold does over tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of years millions of years it'll wear away from the either the quartz outcropping or the reefs that are running into the hill that they had to sink the shafts down all that gold would work its way down into here the lowest point so once the miners found the alluvial gold here they would go looking for the eluvials or the source or the fault or the quartz reefs that used to contain all of the gold and uh this was a pretty good mine i think out of the seven mines that are up in the hill it's only the lady griffiths so i think that was meant to be mined over four levels a couple of big stopes up in the top levels but all of those uh polymetallic faults 
quartz faults they were uh, uh, chasing down all ended very abruptly. So although this started in 1890 odd, I think early 1890s, it ended very abruptly because as they were following all of these uh, quartz loads down, there's a huge shear, a huge fault. And as soon as they hit that, they could not find out where all those quartz reefs continued on. I do also believe they had a uh, problem out here with flooding. So that's how quickly gold rushes can end, guys. If that fault causes that uh, little fissure in the rock, the quartz, just to shift a little bit, they would have found it. And I think to this day, there's probably uh, been people out here drilling. They have never found it. So that's why the gold rush ended so quickly. And this wasn't a provisional gold field. Monal was a proper mineral field, was a proper gold field, gazetted gold field. That looks to be like an old claim post. Wow. Now that would be the flume off the boiler. One of the big exhausts. I can see an old water tank rusting away in the bush. And uh, somewhere down here would have to be all the battery stands. Whoa! Actually looks like this could be it. This could be all the uh, crushings. They didn't refine into the gold. Wow, we. Yeah, here we go. This definitely looks like the old uh, dump site for the mill. You got two different uh, consistencies. You see it like that kitty little look. And it normally means it's processed ore. And it's that really thick core stuff. That's normally the uh, waste that they've got from the actual mine itself before it's milled. Oh, I'm so glad we found it, guys. The Monal Goldfield. I also love when uh, all of the uh, places that we explore come together through research. So, obviously, you guys have seen uh, Glassford Creek. I think a lot of the funding for Glassford Creek was hard to get going uh, because this goldfield ended so abruptly. But if the Lady Griffith was mined over four levels with some big stopes and had a drive that was 160 metres, they were definitely onto some good stuff. It's like an old shipping container. Again, really old guys. I think I say it in a lot of the stuff, but we love this because we can date it. This would be sort of early 1900s, 1910. Because welding was commonly used in Australia in 1930. But not in the mines. Everything in the mines was done on a budget. It was a lot easier to fabricate stuff that way than it was to get a welder out. So once you see welded carts and welded wrought iron, you know that you're starting to get towards the 1930s and 1940s. So cool. Oh, I am absolutely starving. I left home at 5 o'clock this morning. Got my little stove with me. Gonna have myself a nice little lunch. And then we'll send the drones up to see what we can find of the mines. Well, lunch is served. Maggi noodles. After lunch, we'll uh, wash up the cutlery down there. Send the drone up to see what we can see left of the mines. Don't think this has ever been reworked. So it's pretty common for uh, old gold mines to close down before World War One, and then be picked up again in the 30s or 40s as the price of gold fluctuates. But I can definitely not find anywhere that uh, anywhere has been back out here. I think it's because of that uh, fault occurrence, like I said before. It'd be pretty cool if we can capture uh, an added or uh, a couple of shafts on the drone, but we'll soon find out. I'm starving. Time for lunch. Alrighty, guys. Now, the uh, drone didn't prove too uh, worthwhile in uh, this episode, so uh, we're going to abandon it pretty quick and just use it as a little bit of the outro footage. Uh, if I had to take a guess, you can see that the uh, course that the uh, drone is flying now is up this little ravine. I dare say that's probably where they trace the uh, alluvial gold up out of the riverbed, because uh, indeed the mines are at the end of this little uh, ravine. So all of the workings over to the east with the smaller workings, they are indeed collapsed. Uh, apparently they have been bulldozed. And all the workings over to the uh, northeast, uh, we couldn't actually get to, because like I said, we don't have permission to be on that land. So you can also see from the uh, drone footage, it'll be pretty hard going, as is indeed a uh, very thick bush. So we hope you enjoyed today's episode. Uh, if you did miss the intro, please go back. There was a bit of an important update uh, in terms of uh, YouTube community standards and uh, just a bit of a direction that the page is heading. 
Uh, we are indeed very confused as uh, YouTube does allow uh, such topics as train surfing and uh, people that are uh, going inside uh, and trespassing in military bunkers around the world. Uh, and that seems to get by, uh, but uh, they seem to be after the uh, YouTube mine explorers. It's not exactly a big community. There's only a few dozen of us uh, that do it worldwide. So uh, we hope you enjoyed this random uh, Monday night update. Uh, we realised that we needed to post this because the uh, because the episode coming to you this Friday night has a bit of a Christmas outro. So uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. We hope everyone's really well. Uh, we hope everyone is uh, enjoying some great family time or some time off. So thanks for tuning in today, guys. We hope everyone's really well, and we'll see you guys at Christmas Eve.